So when it comes to rubbish, we used to just throw it in the bin and forget about it. But nowadays, we want to recycle, which is good. But how'd that even happen? Well, economists are always coming up with incentive schemes to get people to behave in certain ways. Decision makers too, you know, like governments and advertising people. And this old concept of container deposit legislation, or CDL, is a typical example. Basically, back in the 70s, a think tank or working group or someone said, if we want people to recycle, we need to give them an incentive. And so they decided, hey, let's give them money. And that's what they did. They added five cents to the cost of every can or bottle or drink, and then you return it to get your five cents back. Now, because I live in South Australia and have for about 12 years, I know that CDL hasn't exactly kept up with inflation. But you do get 10 cents these days. Double the incentive. Okay, this sounds great in theory, but when I'm walking down the street and I got an empty can, I think to myself, am I going to carry this can around all day for 10 cents? No. Maybe I could ask someone else, hey buddy, you want to hold on to this can for me all day and then come and find me later and I'll pay you 10 cents. No, he's not stupid. Then someone tells me, hey, did you know that if you had lots of those, you could make more money? But I don't want to carry around one can all day, let alone carry around lots of cans or do it over and over. The incentive to hold on to that can just isn't enough. Okay, so let's now pretend for a second that I do carry my can around all day. I got to get it home, clean it, store it, load it into my car, then drive it to the depot, wait in line, give it to some other guy, and then collect my 10 cents. I don't want to do that either. We call these contingency variables. You say, wow, you'll give me 10 cents for that piece of rubbish? Awesome. But then I say, you have to do all this other stuff to get it. These variables can ruin everything. But the thing is, I really do want to recycle, and I want other people to as well. The good news? 99% of people are already recycling, but only when they're at home. Do they get paid? No. That's because when economists talk about incentive, it's not just about money. Economists know there's real value in what's called warm glow, and its currency is based on doing the right thing. The economics of warm glow was discovered around 15 years after CDL was introduced to South Australia. These days, our attitude toward the environment has made recycling even more valuable than ever. In this case, our growing environmental awareness and growing need over the last 30 years to feel good about recycling is bigger than money. And even worse for CDL are these things called unintended consequences that can attach themselves to any incentive scheme. In this case, people are recycling at home, but you've made my rubbish worth money. And so now people are digging cans out of my recycle bin at home or loading up shopping trolleys and wheeling them to the depot, they're stealing my warm glow, which is my whole incentive to recycle. The old CDL incentive is now competing with a bigger incentive. What's really interesting about South Australia is that we have a side-by-side -side comparison that shows at-home recycling is now working at a rate that makes CDL redundant. And when we're out of the home, contingency variables have changed things so dramatically, CDL is redundant there too. The reason why our new incentive to recycle at home has become so powerful is due to the convenience and how easy it is. Help me out here. I want to feel good about recycling when I'm not at home, but I don't have access to my recycle bin. Now that people's incentives have changed, maybe our public bins should change too. In the meantime, I guess you and I will pay extra for drinks. Cheers.